Hey, Shalom YouTube. This is Brother Richard at Ozarks Altruistic. And today I'm coming to you and I want to read to you out of the scriptures. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read uh, a small segment of what we call a Torah portion. Okay? Torah portions are um, a way that's been devised to read the entire scriptures over the course of a year. So what we have here is we have like the Old Testament or the Torah, okay? We have the prophets and we have the renewed covenant or the New Testament is what people, some people call it, okay? So what the deal is, is we read these and they coincide with one another. And generally, while you're reading these Torah portions, you find out also that they coincide or the world coincides with what's being read that particular time and that in, in, during the week with what's going on all around us. Okay, so the the scriptures uh, uh, that's that's what real reality is. Reality is the scriptures. Everything else around us is pretty much fictitious and usually a big head fake. So uh, the more we stay in this, the more realistic we get because we get the mind of the Father. We get closer to His mind anyway, um, as opposed to the mind of the reprobate individuals that are being ruled by Satan. Okay, so without further ado, uh, okay, so also this Torah portion this week is a bit close to my heart because this is my weekly Torah portion for my birth. Um, so uh, it's, it's really exciting to, to be able to realize that, you know, hey, you were born at a certain time and this pertains to that. So I encourage you to find out when that was based on what your Hebrew birth date was because the reason why I say Hebrew birth date is because the Gregorian calendar was created afterwards and later and by the Greeks, right? So we might want to see what the Hebraic mindset uh, for that was for you. And maybe you can match your Torah portion and learn how to read it as well, okay? Um, of course, you'll know how to read it because you can read English because it's written in English. What I'm saying is learn more about it and um, get to appreciate around the time you were born based on what the scriptures were saying at that time. Okay, so we're going to start in Exodus 13, verse 17, or uh, Shemoth 13, verse 17. And generally, these Torah portions are named after what is going on in the first sentence or so of the uh, first uh, verse. And so, and this is after he let go. And it came to be when Pharaoh had let the people go, that Elohim did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines. Though that was nearer, for Elohim said, lest the people regret when they see fighting and return to Mitzrayim. So this is uh, on Passover, right? So people are leaving on Passover. And what's going on at this point is the father recognizes that some of these people are a bit beat down, and he doesn't want to tempt them right off. Um, so... He gave them a break by leading them a different way. So Elohim led the people around by the way of the wilderness of the Sea of Reeds. And the children of Israel went up in fives from the land of Mitzrayim. And Moshe took the bones of Yosef with him. For he certainly made the children of Israel swear, saying, Elohim shall certainly visit you, and you shall bring my bones from here with you. So this is what Yosef was saying. Yosef says, hey, Father's going to visit you in the, in the coming days. And whenever he does, it's prophetic, right? I want you to bring my bones with you. So Moshe did so. And they departed from Sukkot and camped in Etham at the edge of the wilderness. And Yahuwah went before them by day in a column of cloud and to lead the way and by night in a column of fire to give them light so as to go by day and night. The column of cloud did not cease by day, nor the column of fire by night before the people. Chapter 14. The Father leads the way, he lights the way, does he not? And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they turn and camp before Pi Haharoth, between Migdal and the sea, opposite of Baal Safon, camp before it by the sea. For Pharaoh shall say to the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land, and the wilderness has closed them in. How wrong is that? 
and I shall strengthen the heart of Pharaoh, and he shall pursue them. But I am to be esteemed through Pharaoh and over all his army, and the Mitzrites shall know that I am Yahuwah. And they did so. So Pharaoh didn't have it in him to do this either. Okay, so he was a bit beat down, but the father's like, I'm going to teach this human Elohim in a um, fictitious individual that um, he's not Elohim. Okay, and I'm going to show not only him, but I'm going to show my people, Yisrael, and I'm also going to show all the Mitzrites that he is no Elohim. Uh, the next thing is, he's, he says, um, and the Mitzrites shall know that I am Yahuwah, and they did so. So it must be very important that the Father wants everyone to know his name, not just his name to verbalize, but his reputation. So whenever we talk about the Father's name, his esteem, uh, we're talking about in his name, we're talking about in his reputation. And his reputation is the Torah, and he does what he says, as we should do. Okay. And it was reported to the sovereign of Mitzrayim that the people had fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this, that we have let Yisrael go from serving us? So he made his chariot ready and took his people with him. And he took 600 choice chariots and all the chariots of Mitzrayim with officers over all of them. And Yahuwah strengthened the heart of Pharaoh, sovereign of Mitzrayim, king of Egypt. And he pursued the children of Israel, but the children of Israel went out defiantly. And we do, don't we? And the Mitzrayites pursued them and all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them camping by the sea beside Pi Haharoth before Baal Safon. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes and saw the Mitzrites coming up after them. And they were greatly afraid. So the children of Israel cried out to Yahuwah. And they said to Moshe, did you take us away to die in the wilderness because there's no burial sites in Mitzrayim? What is this you have done to us to bring us up out of Mitzrayim? Is this not the word that we spoke to you in Mitzrayim saying, leave us alone and let us serve the Mitzrites, live in slavery, live in sin? Mm -mm. For it would have been better for us to serve the Mitzrites than to die in the wilderness. That right there is why Moshe is the leader. Because there needs to be assembly. There needs to be leadership. Those people didn't even know how to take care of their own family. And Moshe said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the deliverance of Yahuwah. If we were to look at that, deliverance is salvation too, right? So the deliverance of Yahuwah, Yahushua possibly. We should look at that which he does for you today. For the Mitzrites whom you see today, you are never, never to see again. Does that sound like a, like a reading from Revelations perhaps? See, because what happens is, is the scriptures are cyclical. All right, you can put one on top of the other through the generations and it's going to continue to go until the Father, uh, his whole will is done throughout all of our generations, right? So Yahuwah does fight for you. You keep silent. In other words, be quiet and let the Father do his, do his deal. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, Why do you cry to me? Speak to the children of Israel and let them go forward. And you lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And let the children of Israel go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, see, I am strengthening the hearts of the Mitzrites and they shall follow them. And I am to be esteemed through Pharaoh and over all his army, his chariots, and his horsemen. Father is making a point here. He is the only Elohim. He is almighty. Okay? And the Mitzrites shall know that I am Yahuwah. Sounds like he likes to make sure you know his name and you know his renown and you understand his reputation. When I am esteemed through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen, and the messenger of Elohim, who went before the camp of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the column of cloud went from before them and stood behind them. And came between the camp of the Mitzrites and the camp of Israel. And it was the cloud 
and the darkness, and it gave light by night. And the one did not come near the other all night. So the, so the father separated the two camps by his might, okay? So the Egyptians thought that they might go and trample our people at that point, but they weren't allowed to. Father didn't bring them out there for that, no. And he didn't bring our people out there to cry and moan either. Let's, let's keep that in mind as the times get harder, okay? We should squeeze together like this fist and strengthen around our families and our brothers and our sisters. Don't be a damn crybaby. And Moshe stretched out his hand over the sea, and Yahuwah caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, and the waters were a wall to them on their right and to their left. Can you imagine what that looked like? I know some of us have seen, have seen some shows, movies, perhaps that what it might have looked like. That is just awesome in itself. And what it really looked like, I don't know. I would have, it would have been awesome. And the Mitzrites pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea. All the horses of Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to be in the morning watch that Yahuwah looked down upon the army of the Mitzrites through the column of fire and cloud. And he brought the army of the Mitzrites into confusion. Sounds like Revelations again, Armageddon. And he took off the wheels of their chariots <clears throat> and that they drove them with, with difficulty. And the Mitzrites said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for Yahuwah fights for them against the Mitzrites. And he's right. They're right about that. Then Yahuwah said to Moshe, stretch out your hand over the sea and let the waters come back upon the Mitzrites on their chariots and on their horsemen. And Moshe stretched out his hand over the sea and the sea returned to its usual flow at the break of day with the Mitzrites fleeing into it. Not good, like a big old wave on both sides just closing in. Thus Yahuwah overthrew the Mitzrites in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned, covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the army of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, and not even one was left of them. That's what's going to happen also in the end. There won't be one of these people left. Everyone's going to keep the Torah. You feel me? And the children of Israel walked on dry ground in the midst of the sea. And if you don't, you're going to get ditched. There's the last little... Uh, sifting at the end of the millennial kingdom. And the waters were a wall to them on the right and on their left. Thus, Yahuwah saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Mitzrites. And Yisrael saw the Mitzrites dead on the shore. And Yisrael saw the great work which Yahuwah had done. And he had done this in Mitzrayim. And the people feared Yahuwah and believed Yahuwah and his servant Moshe. Okay. So the father does these things and he saves us out of things, um, uh, hard situations in our lives. So I, I, I'd look at this and I'd take a, a bit of an example. Now the Torah portion is much longer than this, but this is where I'm going to stop. I'm just going to say that we need to look and, and count the blessings that the father has given us in the times that he's pulled us out from things that we know that he's pulled us out from. And we should also think upon the things that we have no idea that he saved us from because this is a, a physical as well as a spiritual battle. And I assure you, uh, Satan is absolutely trying to uh, destroy your soul right this moment and everyone around you. Because if he can stop you, if you're the man of your house, then he can stop everyone in your household just about, okay? So what we have to do is we have to stay in the word, okay? And we have to let the word define the word. And also, we need to remember some things um, that these are not old thought processes. These are old thought processes, but they are also new, as in renewed, in the renewed covenant. Because we can see in the book of Exodus or Shemoth, we can see the book of Revelations, right? So this is what has happened. This is what will happen. This didn't happen on some false day. This happened on Passover, okay? So my thought process is, is uh, let's get back to the, to the old ways, okay? Let's get back to the old ways because there was nothing wrong with them. There was only something wrong with us. Uh, we're the ones that have um, made separation. You know, we chose the tree 
uh, of, of uh, the knowledge of good and evil as opposed to just the knowledge of good. So what we're going to do is we're going to in, uh, be inclined to move further, closer to our good inclination, which uh, brings us closer to the Father. And we're going to leave the evil stuff behind as we get sanctified or cleansed out. We're like this, this clay pot. It's a uh, clay pot, right? He's the potter. It's got this dirty water in it. And we just got to we got to dump it out. But what happens is that water is pretty dirty. So we got to rinse it out again. Rinse it out again. Rinse, wash, repeat. Okay? So that's what I'm encouraging you to do today. And uh, this is a part of my channel that I'm going to start, you know, doing a, a few discussions on the scriptures. And you're more than welcome to to uh, make some comments and, and keep it clean. You know, if you don't agree with me, then go away. Okay? <laughs> as far as if you're going to start a fight. I don't want to fight about nothing. This is what the word of the Father is, okay? And what the, what the word of the Father is, is, is whole and it's true. Now, if there's a misunderstanding on my part or I make a mistake, and I'm going to do that like quite a bit, then we can have a decent, uh, mature discussion amongst people that are supposed to love each other because that, that's the group of people that I want to form up. Uh, I want to tribe up with people that, that want to love the Father first and foremost. And then next, if you love the Father, you're going to love the people that love the Father. That's just naturally how it goes. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I'm going to read the rest of my Torah portion because it's a, 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 a sentimental thing for me. And um, if you would want to read it, I believe it goes from uh, Exodus 13, 17 to Exodus 17. And just finish the chapter 17 what? 17, 16. That right there is uh, Sister Nicole. Uh, she's my she's my brain, my navigator, and everything. So anyway, there's that. I'm going to post this, and I might even post it today on Shabbat because I don't think there's nothing wrong with doing this. Um, I hope you guys enjoy. Let me know. All right, Shalom.